basically this course is about uh, what the bible really tells us about personal finance how do we manage our own personal finance and a lot of concepts regarding uh, wealth regarding money regarding uh, saving regarding investing is covered uh, in the bible so i'll be taking you through uh, them uh, for session by session so basically how we handle money impacts our relationship with the lord okay so if therefore you have not been faithful in the use of worldly wealth who will entrust you the true riches to you so this is a, a quote from luke 16:11 uh, the quote is clearly telling us that if we are not able to manage the wealth that is given to us you know uh, or it could be not really wealth it could be whatever little amount of money that we have for managing it which we usually start with little amount of money and only if we learn how to manage that we are faithful to our 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 uh, values etc and we manage that well only then we are able to uh, you know uh, look forward to a bigger corpus or uh, creating wealth in the long term so even the the gospel tells us about that in the bible there are about 200 2350 verses which speak about money possession how to handle money okay so money has been spoken a lot in the bible though we as uh, lay people we haven't really uh, focused on that aspect as such and we've been focusing more on the spiritual aspect as such but uh, this is a real actual study which has been done uh, which which indicates that there are 2350 verses in the entire bible which speaks about how to handle money and possessions okay. so god has certain responsibilities uh, and we also have our own responsibilities we learn that uh, what 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 are god's response and what god is doing that but are we doing our responsibilities okay. so ideally uh, initially we start managing our money alone uh, usually i have seen that uh, men probably take the lead in managing the money at home within married couples as well they are the ones who usually take charge of managing the money women uh, usually either they feel that okay it's the men's job to do not mine that could be one of the one of the reasons why usually men end up handling the personal finances but the bible doesn't say that bible indicates that it has to be actually uh, uh, managed jointly money is a joint affair between married couples uh, somebody who is not married like one can understand but if somebody is married then it has it's ideally a joint responsibility of managing money and if both husband and wife are not on the same page in terms of managing money then there could be a lot of conflicts that could emerge okay uh bible speaks about two economies god's economy and world economy God's economy basically uh, is handled by God. God's economy is handled by God, and uh, Bible teaches about about God's economy, and God plays a central role of creation. How He started with the uh, Adam and Eve, and you know how He kept on. Uh, Uh, blessing the various prophets and giving direction people economy uh, uh, the world economy is handled by people you know because world economy is mostly about material things okay and most of in today's world we handle money in sharp contrast to what god has told us okay uh, in god's economy it's more about principles it's more about contentment it's more about fulfillment in uh, Uh, world economy which is handled by people is more about material possessions it's more about getting richer and richer it's more about creating more wealth uh, without having a clear purpose you know isaiah 55:8 says my thoughts are not your thoughts neither are your ways my ways okay so this is a very clear indication that we don't think the way the bible tells us to think or the bible tells us to do that is why there is a huge difference in how we apply a lot of these principles in our lives 
how we handle our money influences our fellowship with the Lord. Okay. Luke 16, 11 says, If therefore you are not being faithful in the use of worldly wealth, who will enter the true riches to you? And this is very beautifully indicated by the uh, parable of the talents. We all have grown up, uh, you know, reading about the parable of the talents. Uh, Matthew 25, 21. Uh, in the Matthew chapter 25, uh, there was this uh, rich man who went uh, on a long tour and he gave, uh, he called his three servants. Uh, each of the servants he gave talents according to their capability. So some he gave five, one of them he gave five, second one he gave uh, uh, three and the second, third one, five, two and one. When he came back after some time, the one who had received five, he happily told the, the his owner that, you know, I have doubled, I have invested that talent, I never uh, kept it aside, I used it, I invested it and here it is, you know, I have doubled your talents. Uh, similarly, the second servant also who had received two uh, repeated the same thing that okay, I have invested this talent, I didn't let it go waste and uh, I have increased it to four. Uh, both these servants, uh, he tells, the master tells them that you know, I will put you in charge of bigger things, well, uh, come uh, enter my uh, faithful servant, I will put you in charge of bigger things, which means that because they were given smaller uh, uh, goods of smaller value to manage and they managed, managed it so well, uh, it is basically indicating indirectly that God has told, told, or told us that if we are able to manage whatever little things that we have, usually we start with smaller amounts, you know, when we start earning as our life starts, we def our salaries are low, our incomes are low, expenses are there. But if you are able to put that money aside in the right manner, if you are able to manage that money in the right manner, we will be put in charge of bigger things in life, which means it indicates that if you are able to manage the little things well, the salary or income doesn't matter because you are disciplined in managing that little amount of money that you earn, you will gradually uh, accumulate bigger amounts of money and the money that you have invested also will grow. And over a period of time, you will have enough money for your needs, for your fulfillment of all your needs. You know? So, this is what the parable of the talents tells us. Uh, typically, it teaches us three important things. You would have had a question why the first uh, servant got five talents, second servant got two, and third got one. You know? So, this we can correlate to us in our life. Our salaries are not the same, our incomes are not the same, depending upon the skill that we have, depending on the talents that we have, we are able to earn a different kind of salary depending upon where we work, how we are using our skill. Okay? So similarly, uh, the servant, uh, who the, the master who gave the talents or we can relate it to God, uh, who helps us in our journey of life, you know, our incomes are not the same. But he ensures that we get what we need and not necessarily what we want. Okay, so whatever we earn, whatever uh, uh, employment we have or business that we have, okay, we are able to uh, earn depending upon our capabilities. Everybody may not earn the same amount of money. Some might earn more, some might earn less. But we get what we need and not necessarily what we want. Okay, that's the first thing. Second thing that we learn is all of us will be held accountable on how we use the talents of finances. You know? All of us will be held accountable because the uh, verse of Matthew clearly states that uh, if you are able to manage or do well in little things, I will make you in charge, I will put you in charge of bigger things, you know. So if we are not being able to manage our finances well, if we are ignoring our finances completely, we are not doing the way we, we, sh we are supposed to do then probably we will not be uh, put in charge of bigger things, uh, you know, there could be a lot of uh, turmoil in our path of financial uh, stability, you know. Third is, more will be given to the ones who manage well, you know, which means that if you are able to manage whatever little wealth you have, whatever little income you have in the right manner, gradually you will learn 
to manage bigger amounts which indicates your incomes would grow and at the same time your your investments would grow because your savings are growing you are able to manage your money well you are able to invest that money well okay so it indirectly indicates that you will be held accountable you receive uh, what you need not necessarily what you want and uh, if you are able to manage whatever you receive in a very uh, in a worthy manner in the manner in which the gospel tells us god will put you in charge of bigger things in life possessions compete with the lord for first place in our lives okay uh, today we live in a world which is uh, being bombarded by so many material things uh, there are so many avenues that have come uh, way which keep uh, tempting us to keep spending today we live in a world where uh, we become so conscious about uh, what we wear about where we live about our lifestyle because we start comparing ourselves with others you know so th this is where the possessions compete with us you know this this is where we start start comparing people with material things rather than be looking at uh, uh, you know the contentment aspect in terms of am i earning adequately well am i meeting my requirements am i living a life which i really want to live am i really happy doing what i am doing rather than focusing on these things we start focusing on the possessions okay which is the which is what the lord does not want us to do so money is a prime competitor with christ for the lordship of our lives the moment we start uh, we become slaves of uh, material things we start giving away so easily to material uh, possessions to temptations uh, we uh, start going far away from god and uh, that is where uh, we we falter somewhere and we are not able to uh, that is where we face financial hardships that is where we uh, face difficulties in managing our finances you don't know whether what's going to happen in the next couple of years we may have lots of goals in in, in place we may have lots of ideas on how to use our uh, you know how to uh, achieve certain uh, goals that we have certain uh, milestones that we have but if you are not able to uh, focus on the important aspects of our life and if you keep focusing on possessions then probably uh, we might drift afar drift away from the lord jesus tells us we need to choose one of these two masters okay money is important Uh, it does not mean money is not important but how much importance you give for earning and buying material things you know that uh, aspect needs to be curbed or controlled matthew chapter 6 verses 24 no one can serve two masters either he will hate the one and love the other or he will be devoted one and despise the other you cannot serve both god and money okay so this is very clearly indicating that uh, we need to uh, focus on the goodness aspect of finances which is giving us uh, you know mental happiness bringing contentment uh, working towards fulfilling our needs and if at all we reach a level where our income our, our savings our our, our uh, investments have reached a very good level probably yes then we could also look at improving our lifestyle but we can't be completely focusing on material possessions all the time because then we will we will stop enjoying what we have much of life revolves around the use of money the lord talked so much about money because he knew our lives center around it and uh, undeniably uh, everything today that we speak about we do about you know it all reflects around money nowadays how much time do you spend earning money making decisions to spend thinking of to save thinking to invest thinking to give okay so there are so many things that we could do probably yes we we spend our time in earning money but uh, are we really spending time in making decisions on how we need to spend that money Uh, how much of that money we should save where should we be investing that money and 
as our as a as a bible tells us as a faith tells us that we also need to contribute we also need to donate tithing that we call is also part of our uh, managing finances are we doing that okay so god has prepared a road map for us in the bible and which is what we are going to learn a few things about how we need to go about now let's uh, move into the practical part of our our finances uh, we spoke about the spiritual aspect of money let's look into the practical aspect of how we can apply these principles in our lives and before we start applying there are three four key words in finance that we need to look at we all have heard these key words the only problem is that we have not realized the real meaning of these four words okay first is income okay income is nothing but something which comes into our bank account okay either through earning either through uh, through employment earnings from business earnings from investments okay there is something that we receive okay uh, which is our own hard earned money or money that we have invested using our the right uh, kind of strategy or using our skills expense anything that you give out you spend that's expense okay assets assets are something that we we create okay not out of expense but out of income okay assets can produce value assets is something which can produce value uh could we talk about various assets we talk about shares we talk about mutual funds we talk about fixed deposits we talk about property gold uh and in developed markets we also talk about antiques uh, art market etc all these are assets okay uh assets is something which is of some value whenever you want to sell it you will get some value and there are certain assets which keep growing in value for example a property may not grow as much as shares but of course it grows in value your fixed deposit gradually grows in value gold depends on the market but in the long term gold values are also going up so these are assets asset is something which you create from your income liabilities as we move ahead in our life to fulfill certain needs we end up in uh, acquiring liabilities liability is nothing but loans or debt we call it debt that we acquire on our books uh, when we are buying our own house it's not easy to buy a house in a city like mumbai on your own savings and of course we have to uh, most of us have to take a house on loan uh, in a later chapters i'll also discuss about good loans and bad loans Uh, right now i'm not discussing whether a house is a good loan or a bad loan but right now i'm just discussing that yes during our journey of life there could be situations when we'll have to take loans we have to acquire liabilities but we need to be conscious about the fact that how much of uh, of our uh, expenses as is going towards liabilities you know we need to be very conscious about that fact and ensure that uh, liabilities are in control because i'll show you in the next slide income is good expenses managed then you are able to generate assets if your income is good expenses are very high your assets will not be generated you will actually in, uh, keep adding up liabilities okay so these are the four key words of finance that we need to know which will be applying practically in our life income expense assets liability okay let us look at this situation here income looks to be more than expenses which is a very good situation to be in ideally every one of us would like to be in this situation where our income is good and expense is much much lower than what income is what does that result into that results into savings and that savings could be invested to generate assets okay a uh, liability is of course there could be some liabilities which might come up uh, because as i mentioned that for something to buy something some goals such as a house etc we ideally end up buying a we are end up taking a loan so we'll have liability in our initial uh, journey of life okay 
uh, but as long as we ha are managing the liability very well so here in this graph in this picture we can see that income is good asset size is also good when we have this kind of a financial picture in our in our family we are easily able to manage expenses we are easily able to manage liabilities okay this is a good situation to be in of course a better situation would be that gradually pay off your liabilities and become debt free but this seems to be a good situation to be in okay so when income is more expense is less liability will be less okay because your assets increases because income is moving towards saving and asset size is increasing liabilities were able to manage very well let's look at the different picture which is what is the situation with many families that i encounter today income is uh, a reasonable but the expenses have actually gone out of hand you know so typically income was uh, growing at a, at a at a normal pace but the expenses have actually outshot the growth in income for example changes in lifestyle one wants to upgrade the lifestyle so it's so today it's so easy to take loans to take liabilities it's very easy today nowadays there are so many uh, nbfcs bank people chasing people you know for loans uh, and at times we find it very easy to just take a loan rather than delaying our purchases rather than delaying our uh, delaying certain goals uh, which might acquire which might make us acquire liabilities we just delay and we end up acquire li acquiring liabilities and which is when your liability payments go up your emi goes up automatically expenses goes up because your your emi has started it could be home loan it could be car loan it could be personal loan okay so you're not able to manage your expenses you end up taking liabilities and what happens is that your your outgoings increase expenses increase and you're not able to have enough surplus for creating assets you might also have to sell your assets at times okay so this is basically the reverse model of the first that we spoke about okay income is less expenses more so we may also have to sell something some part of the assets to take care of our liabilities okay so focus could be the effort the here could be maybe try to increase our income that is one option second is to try to reduce your liabilities reduce your loans or look at your expenses we will look at that shortly uh, we'll look at the practical aspect very shortly so you need to do uh, an exercise here that if this is your situation how can you reduce your expenses how can you try and close some of the loans use some of your assets to close your loans automatically expenses will go down uh, liabilities will go down because uh, li uh, liabilities will go down expenses automatically goes down income uh, then looks to be very decent in terms of managing your expenses and then you are able to uh, put aside money for assets <coughs> a division of responsibilities god has a part and we also have a part god has certain responsibilities and have delegated some roles to us we don't realize many times what is our role and what is god's role when we understand the role well we can experience contentment so this session is all about understanding what our role is in terms of managing finances and how the lord wants us to manage our finances the ultimate aim of this session is basically to uh, acquire contentment we need to learn to be content contentment is mentioned seven times in the bible and out of the seven times six times contentment refers to money in philippians uh, chapter 4 verses 11 to 12 paul writes for i have learned to be content in whatever circumstances i am I know how to get along with humble means and I also know how to live in prosperity. Okay? So contentment ideally means that living within your means. How can you live within your means? You can live within your means only if you know 
what your expenses are you would know your income but do you know what your expenses are are you tracking your expenses do you have something like a budget each month or for the year do you know in this current year how much amount of salary or income you are going to save okay so if you don't know then uh, contentment probably is quite far from us okay so what we'll be doing is there are certain exercises which i'll help you do and which i'll guide you in we need to know how to make a income and an expenditure statement okay how you handle little things now little things for us is budget our monthly budget how you handle little things will determine how you how you will manage bigger things which is assets so if your monthly budget is not there if you don't know what your expenses are if you don't know where you are spending asset creation will not happen we will remain where we are liabilities will keep eating up our income and we will be nowhere we will remain where we are budgeting is the first and the most important exercise which has a direct impact on our savings capability higher income we just discussed that higher income does not necessarily mean higher savings because i've seen that higher income also leads us to higher expenses because we start realizing that our uh, lifestyle needs to improve our capacity to spend has gone up we need to increase our expenses keeping our income in mind so there are a lot of people who keep doing that and there are people who have not high income but moderate income they know how much they should be spending and they are able to save more they are in, in fact able to save a good amount of money in spite of having moderate income due to low expenses and they are able to create better assets gradually okay so instant gratification is something which one has to avoid okay any questions so far before i move to the practical aspect uh no okay. if you have any questions you could all keep posting on the chat uh, i will take it at the end of the yeah okay so i think uh, let's now move to the practical aspect we have looked into the spiritual aspect of why uh, looking into our finances is important why uh, giving importance to managing our money is important where the bible itself is telling us to do that you know and the way to asset creation the way to managing uh, trying to create bigger assets is managing your current level of income in a very uh, what you can say diligent manner only when you are able to do that it results in increase in savings it results in better uh, assets creation over the long term today i will look at three uh, practical exercises which i will also give it to you i will also share these sheets which i have prepared for you all so that you all can uh, at your time in the next coming week one week you uh, this weekend is there available for you when you can actually work on these statements you don't need to share it to me if you want to share it you can share it personally separately just if you want to know about it otherwise this is a exercise for yourself just to open your own eyes and just to know that where you stand today are you doing exactly what what you're supposed to do okay so what i'll do is i'll just share you these statements first i'll share the income and expense statement then i'll share you what a net worth statement is and then i'll also share you the budget statement are you able to see the excel sheet yes team yes okay. yeah. so i will be sharing this sheet uh, uh, i'll be in fact sharing this drive a link to all of you uh, you could download it and put it into your own personal computer and uh, uh, you know uh, look at uh, using this for example uh, one of the uh, so there are several worksheets here one is the personal information you could put your personal information and share it with your spouse your family members so they they know all this information about you your pan number all the other things uh details about your family you know aadhar card number pan number etc health history this can come in handy whenever you you know 
required to get into insurances later when you be required to share this information with your uh, your somebody important to you if a family wants to contact someone when you are not there would do they know who your financial planner is do they know who their lawyer is do they know who their chartered accountant is do they know who your insurance agent is so this information will be there you can fill up this and keep it in your in your uh, computer and share it with your family members uh, this is the cash flow sheet which is your income expense statement here you can use it for entering your income you your income your wife's income if you have any bonus coming in monthly or once a year you can do that if you have a rental income if you have any incentives or interest income so that becomes your income part now comes your expenses so mandatory would be your emi insurance premium health insurance uh, voluntary would be your gym fees club charges and variable will be your grocery bill clothes electricity bill you know so once you start putting your expenses here you will actually realize where you stand you actually this will be an eye opener for us because sometimes we think that oh we are not able to save money uh, i don't know where my money is going i am earning a good income but i don't know where where my you know where there are leakages where the money is going i need to know so this can be one of the eye openers for you okay so try using this sheet and try updating your your own uh, data here next sheet could be goals financial goals what your goals are you know uh, if you have loans and you are in too many too much of loans would you want to be debt free put a year put a timeline to it would you want to be debt free in one year practically i mean if you have say 25 lakh worth of loans it is not very practical that you can clear your loan in one year so be uh, uh, what you can say be realistic about you know what is the goal you want to mention you could say maybe 5 years 7 years or 10 depending upon your 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 income and your capability but it has to be mentioned as a goal if you don't mention it as a goal that will never become a priority for you uh, is retirement a bigger uh, a, a bigger priority for you or is your uh, vacation international vacation a priority for you is retirement a priority for you or buying a bigger house a priority or your son's education or your daughter's education you know so these could be some goals which you could write down you could write down what is the value you are looking at what is the approximate time period you are looking at and when you want to achieve that so this will give you some direction and some sense of okay this is my income this is my expense i need to increase my savings i need to increase my surpluses i need to reduce my expenses you get a priority I, so what happens is i'll give an example i have seen people who are retiring in the next 5 years and uh, at that very moment they start feeling okay i have a smaller house can i look at a bigger house but they start forgetting that a bigger house would call in for a, either a loan or or putting aside a big amount of your retirement savings towards buying the house so you end up buying the house you get that feeling of uh, happiness okay i moved into a bigger house but you're just about to retire in 4 or 5 years it is not possible for you to create a decent corpus in 5 years because you've already utilized a big amount of that to buy this big house towards retirement you realize your children have grown they have got educated they have moved out into different places some have moved out to different uh, uh, nationalities they have gone to different countries for education and they are staying there and they are working there they may not come back so is this big house going to generate some income for you in terms of your retirement income etc so these are certain important reminders you get when you actually start putting your you start asking yourself you start questioning yourself about the decisions that you intend to take and the moment you have these goals in front of you you start prioritizing oh i think my retirement is more important than buying a bigger house now ha huh. if it's 15 years away okay i have time then i can look at maybe buying a house if that works with me but if i am going to just retire in a couple of years uh, uh, you know then should i do that you know so these are some of the questions that could be answered once you start uh, writing down these goals and there is one more sheet here which is about uh, writing down all details of your assets and liabilities it could start with as simple as your saving account are you single are you have a having a single holder account or is it joint holding if it's joint holding is there a nomination 
what is the kind of money that you maintain this also gives you an idea oh my god i'm having 15 bank accounts why am i having 15 bank accounts seven eight bank accounts i'm not using at all some 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 accounts are having thousand rupees two thousand rupees just lying there and you know so this gives you an idea of should i reduce my accounts should i just maintain three or four which are important and those which i'm not using should i close them and put that money in investment investment somewhere rather than just keeping in my bank account if you have fixed deposits if you have recurring deposits you could note it down and this can also be a be a reference to your family member in case you're not there tomorrow so they will know okay uh, details about your assets and liabilities you have a pension account, you have a PPF account, you could add, uh, a, a, you know, additional things if there are there, but I have tried to cover most of it, provident fund, gratuity, if you have postal investments, you have real estate, your self-occupied property, invested property, which year you purchase, this can help your tax person to calculate your taxation in case you're planning to sell, uh, loans and liabilities, how many, which loan you have, and is it in single holder, joint holder, what category of loan, which institution, when the loan is going to get over, you know. Then about insurance policies, which policy you have, which company, what is the scheme name, policy number, when is the premium due, what is the amount of premium you are paying. This data can be directly taken to your cash flow because you would not know what my insurance premium is. The moment you have that sheet in the next worksheet, you come to know your life insurance premium and you fill it here yearly or whatever premium and you get to get to know your complete yearly expenses so this is your life insurance your medical insurance accident insurance you could put it here uh, very important uh, about your loans you know so you could have different kinds of loans credit card automobile house loan uh, there is i have also seen cases where loans are taken within relatives but it's not mentioned anywhere and then uh, a lot of issues take place when the person is not there you know so you need to write down these things so that your family member is aware of what exactly is happening okay you also get an idea of oh my god so many loans why am i having so many loans uh, how am i going to pay off and once you get an idea of so many loans you could start looking at you know how to pay off the loan one by one i'll cover this uh, debt management in the later chapter later seminar but this is just to give an idea that why it is important to note down these things you know and the last sheet that i want to show it to you today is your net worth sheet once you have written down your savings account balance your fixed deposits your ppf your all other investments how much you in your name how much is in your wife's name if at all your parents also is combined with you you can mention that also in case you're looking after them and you know basically uh, there's no other uh, sibling that you have then you could look at uh, at least collating together the information and knowing that where you stand net worth actually gives an indication of where you stand okay what your investments are and you what we do is we add up all the investments together and we deduct it from the liabilities for example if your value of all your assets is 1 crore and the loan that you are supposed to pay back all these loans is 50 lakhs which means your net worth is 100 minus 50, only 50 lakhs, okay. So your idea should be to increase your net worth, okay. That will only happen once you start noting down these things. So what I will do is I will, sh I will uh, later in the group, I will share the link to these uh, uh, sheets which you can personally use, you can download it into your own uh, uh, computer and start using them. Ideally, when we start our uh, next session next week, uh, I'll be happy if, you know, uh, most of you are able to just fill up that information for your own personal satisfaction sake. Uh, you don't need to share it with me. You can keep it for your own satisfaction because the whole idea of this session is to teach you about the spiritual aspect of finance, what the Bible tells us, and also to make you a little independent in terms of how you can actually start doing these things and how you can uh, follow the principles of the Bible in managing your own finances. I will also share one more sheet with you in that drive which is a budget. This is a 12 month budget sheet. Uh, so there are 12 worksheets Jan, Feb, March, April. Let us say today we are in Jan. If we can start doing it from today onward, maybe 20th, you could start putting in your expenses. Are you paying your maintenance on 20th or 15th or 6th, insurance premium etc. 
all these are totaled and in the end you get a summary annual summary so when you start and this is a good month to start because you have you know next 12 months you can get a summary of that and with each month of data filling you can go ahead and check the annual summary you come to oh january month I earned 50,000, my expense was 45,000, 5,000 rupees only saving. Where I have gone wrong? Let me check. February, this was the thing, March. So when you have these sheets with you, you actually come to know which months are going to be your, your high expense months, which months are going to be low expense months, etc. So uh, these, I will leave it with you uh, uh, in a drive. I will share the link with you so you can start using these. Today's session was more about, uh, uh, you know, the applying principles, applying the principles of, our, of, our, of Bible, which is, you know, looking minutely into your finances, taking control of your own finances, you know, and not blaming the destiny and not blaming, sometimes you blame God, you know, what is happening, etc. But we don't take responsibility ourselves. And we're easy, it's so easy for us to blame others, blame God, etc. But in the Bible itself, it's, it's being told that, you know, Start looking at your own finances, start, uh, uh, you know, uh, giving importance to your own money gradually. If you don't give importance to smaller things, you are not going to be put in charge of bigger things. This is the crux, this is the basic thing which is coming out from the, the first session. session. I would like to play a video which is actually a summary of the entire session. Of